Cobra fans, welcome to another episode of Cobra Corner. I am Reese Helms, and I am joined today alongside my wrestling coach, Derek Nelson. Derek, how are you doing today? So pretty good, Reese. Appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your day to put us put us up on social media and everything. Appreciate it. No problem. So Derek has been um, a certain time for every team on campus and around the country, really, with dealing with COVID um, restrictions. Kind of how have you kept the team engaged and focused on the upcoming season? Uh, for most part, we, we call it approaching normal. Um, you know, even though we're wearing masks, you know, we did a lot of running and stuff like that starting out. You know, we've, we've finally been able to have, I think, 27 or 28 days of, of wrestling contact with, with no issues. Um, you know, we, we just call it approaching normal. We keep our sights set on that national tournament, wherever that's going to be this year. And, you know, we're going to keep plugging forward in terms of what we've always done for the past two years is always keep eyes focused on the national tournament and, and just try to approach normal as best we can. So this is kind of a two-part question. Um, during your college wrestling days, you obviously graduated here from Coker, got your master's degree from Coker. Is that kind of a selling point you used to recruit saying, hey, I wrestled here, I went to school here, I kind of know what the, the life here is at Coker. Um, and to go along with that as well, like what is your just overall pitch to get kids here to Coker? Uh, for the most part, you know, it, it's always nice to be able to say, hey, I know what professors to take. You know, I always try to steer guys to take, you know, intensive Spanish with Don Mack or, you know, take a class with Dr. Lay or Dr. Kenyon um, or or even take your bio class with Dr. Flaherty in your, in your lab with uh, Professor Avanzato. You know, I think that those are great keys to have for us. But as far as selling it on the wrestling side of things, you know, the team I wrestled for here is is totally different than the teams that we have here now. Um, you know, we try to compartmentalize it as much as possible that each team's its own unique kind of entity. And the teams that we were on and the team that Coach Parland and I were on were, were we were special teams. And, and the team last year here that we were a part of coaching was a special team in its own right. Um, so it's, it's always nice to be able to say, hey, you know, I, I've experienced the classes, you know, the two pieces of paper behind me, you know, show you that, you know, what a Coker education is about. But as far as the wrestling side of things, you know, we try to sell what we're doing now um, but it definitely helps when you say, hey, take this professor or that professor or, you know, when a professor tells us, hey, who's not in class and we can kind of get them on, you know, the right path right after that. So it's, it's really about kind of recruiting who we are now versus what we were then. So talking about now, the um, athletes you do have now, um, we talked last month with CJ Perkins Willett, just talking about his background, um, how he got involved with wrestling. And when you look at your guys' roster, you have people, you have guys from all over the country, really. Um, how important is diversity and inclusion to the wrestling program? How do you guys, um, you know, make sure that happens? <laughs> I mean, I think the first thing is always trying to foster honesty within the team. Um, you know, having an environment where guys can can voice opinions and talk to one another and talk it out. You know, we're one of the very few places on the planet right now where, you know, if you say something somebody doesn't like, you get to wrestle them and you get to pick them up and slam them. And, you know, then you you shake hands afterwards and you're friends again. So, um, diversity and inclusion is massive for wrestling. You know, you start looking at our lineup up and down it, you know, we have so many first generation college students, so many people of color, so many people from different backgrounds, different walks of life. Um, you know, people that are, you know, from the highest echelons of society to, to people that are, you know, trying to make a difference for themselves. And for us, you know, at the end of the day, we turn around and we see what, where we've come from together. But at the end of the day, we put, you know, a Coker C on our chest and we put the blue and gold on and, and we're a family and, you know, it, it definitely helps diversity wise with wrestling styles because everybody's different in their style. So it's, it's an interesting practice every day, you know, watching, you know, CJ try to throw somebody through the air or, you know, watching Omar put up points on somebody just by taking them down to death. Um, so for us, it's, it's always looking at, you know, who are we right now as a family and, and how do we, you know, welcome more people into that family and, and become, you know, even better. You mentioned Omar. He was one of the four national qualifiers last season, along with um, Corey and Zach. Um, kind of how nice is it to have three returning national qualifiers as you come back into the season? It's, it's uncharted territory. Um, I think it's, it, it was our first year last year, you know, kind of having that many qualifiers at a tournament. You know, the, the, the running joke was at the national tournament that Coker was the luckiest team in the country. Um, with the way we were getting guys in, you know, before that we had two guys qualified and then all of a sudden we turn around, you know, two days before the tournament, Hey, you got four now, um, which was really fun. And it was an exciting experience. You know, Omar was our first true freshman national qualifier. Um, Corey Christie was our first ever non-transfer national qualifier. And then Zach had a, had a great tournament and, you know, it was great just to see guys finally get healthy to the point where we were peaking at the right time. 
Um, as far as taking the next step for this year, it's just a matter of staying healthy and, and continue to grow. Um, you know, we're working on our craft. We're trying to figure out some different techniques. We're, we're trying to get better at places where we weren't necessarily the strongest last year. And, and it's been kind of a slow go because we haven't been able to have enough practice time or enough individual time or one-on-one -on -one time because we've been pulled in so many different directions and so many meetings and so many different things. But, you know, as long as we continue to kind of keep our sights set on that national tournament and, and peak at the right time, like we did last year, you know, amazing things can happen. It just kind of comes together all in itself and it's really, really beautiful. Hopefully I'll have enough hair by the end of the year for it. But, um, you know, we're growing. We've got a lot of new guys on the team too. that are going to help us. And, you know, we're always looking to add. So, Hopefully, you know, come come January, we're we're ready to rock. And speaking of the other guys as well, um, what do you think some realistic goals are for the for the team as a whole going into the season? I mean, for us, you know, season is going to be so weird. You know, I think first and foremost is try to come out of this thing COVID free as as much as possible. I think that's an accomplishment in and of itself. The shows the discipline of the team to to not do the things that puts themselves at risk. Um, but for us, you know, I mean, we made that precedent last year where we're not going to accept anything less than four. We're not going to accept less than, you know, four guys to the national tournament. We're, we're not going to accept anything less than, you know, finishing in the top three in the conference. You know, we want to challenge for those titles. We want to win rings. We want to do big things. And, and we've definitely seen that in our recruiting in terms of guys reaching out to us. And, you know, it's, it's a lot easier now to you're not convincing people to be here. They want to be here. And I think that's made life a lot easier, especially coming into year three for me as, as a head coach here that, you know, we're starting to see guys, you know, want to be a part of this program because they see we're doing the right things, which is a good feeling for the, for the coaching staff. And, you know, we've got some of the best coaches here in the country. Um, you know, we have a new assistant here, Coach V, who's been just awesome. And, and Coach Parlin's been integral to building this family environment and making sure these guys have someone to kind of talk to because I'm not always the, you know, guy you want to hear from in terms of if you're looking for, you know, kind words of encouragement. I'm always kind of more of the honest kind of, you know, tough love kind of person. So we play well off of each other. So it's, you know, the expectations are always going to be high for us. You know, we, we shattered a ceiling last year and, and we don't want to go back to, you know, oh boy, I hope we only get one guy to the national tournament. You know, it's, it's no less than four. Let's, let's talk about tournament trophies. Let's talk about top 25 rankings and let's kind of keep doing those things because that's fun. Well, Derek, thank you for joining us today. We're looking forward to uh, seeing you guys back out there, hopefully in January. Hopefully you guys continue to stay COVID free and um, we'll see you, see you out there in January. Appreciate it, Reese. Thank you. No problem.